Okay, so we're back to the um, formula sheet. We go next, we got loop, mesh, and all this good stuff. Source transformation I already did. Um, so I did the source transformation twice over here. Um, I'll get into the series stuff later. For now, I'm going to just do loop and mesh. Um, so I'm going to use the same familiar circuit that we did before, the S here. So the loop method incorporates um, some very important ideas. The first one is that delta V is equal for parallel circuits. Okay. The second one is that um, I is equal for all series uh, resistors. So this is, sorry. Um, so delta V is, is, is equal for all parallel. L, I is equal for all series. So you can see this line is parallel to this line is parallel to this line. So the delta V from A to B it's the same regardless of path. So this all the way to here is equal to this across here, which is equal to this across here. So that's something that um, these methods um, will take into account. The, another thing is, is um, I is equal to V over R. Another thing is sum of the I in is equal to sum of the I out. So we're assuming that energy is conserved just within the circuit um, at all times. Um, okay. So these are the things that we need to know. So what, what do we do is we put a loop here and we put kind of just a signal that indicates a loop. All right. So we have I1 going, or I, I guess I3, I2, I1. So in the other ones, I1 went this way, and then I was I2, I3, but I guess I put 3 up here this time. So, you know, 3, uh, 2, 1. Okay, so we have I1 going, and I1 passes through the resistor 3 and V3. So we have I1 times R3. So what is IR? V equals IR. So what we're doing is V3. So this is the same as V3. So we have positive, And then we're going across VS from positive to negative. So we have a positive VS. Right, so that's kind of how it works. So I have I1, R3, plus VS is equal to now we choose a different path from A to B. So it's I2 times R2. Okay. So to rewrite this formula, you know, we can do rewrite it as um, V3 plus Vs equals V2. So that's the same thing. But this is the form we want to leave it in. Okay. Um, sometimes it can be useful to to put it to have these things known. Um, just like because if the problem says solve for v two, then I I know that I only need to solve for i two to to get v three v two. So it's important to to recognize that v three is i one r two and v two is i two r two. Sorry, this is i three. So the next thing is, um, you, let's choose a different path. So we go um, A to B is going to be I1, R1. And that's going to be equal to I2, R2, which is going to be equal to I3, R3 plus Vs. Okay. So we have all these formulas. Um, so let's do... Um, Let's see here. So how do we want to deal with this with this circuit? So we have a bunch of formulas. Um, 
can we solve the problem with the, just these formulas? The answer is we probably can. What we can do is we can say I1 is I2 times R2 divided by R1. And then we can, um, you know, we can solve for I2. We can put I2 up here. So then we have I3 and I1. And then we can um, solve for I3 in terms of I1. And then we could possibly, you know, do something there. You know, solve for I1 in there. It's possible, but 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 what we do is um, we can do the the mesh. See, the mesh is is where the 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 wires connect. So we have where the wires connect. We have um, I S going in is equal to I one going out plus I two going out plus I three going out. Right. So. Is is equal to I1 is V1 R1, I2 is V2 over R2, I3 is V3 plus Vs over R3. So if you go, if you don't know, not sure why that is, you can go back and watch the other videos, and I and I do this part where I'm doing source transformation. Where the delta v is is the v3 plus vs. So the, this vs influences the current, and this is the, this is the, the relationship between um, this is i3. So the way that vs influences the current is is by a ratio of vs over r3. So if you do the source transformation and you try to solve it with the source transformation, you'll get the same result. Okay, and I proved that earlier. So this is what we have now. Okay, so what, what's important here is V1 is equal to V2, which is equal to all of this. Okay, so if I simplify this, what it actually is 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 equal to... Um, V3 plus Vs, all multiplied by um, our equivalent, which where our equivalent again is, or sorry, the inverse of our equivalent, where our equivalent is 1 divided by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And so what, what I'm doing, if you don't see this, is that we know V1 is equal to V2, which is equal to this whole value. So we can factor, we can sit, we can, you know, we can factor this V3 plus Vs out of all of this, and then we recognize that, that, that what's left is the inverse of RQ, which is this. Okay, so what we get out of this is um, IS is um, V3 plus Vs over our equivalent. Right. So IS is known, our equivalent is known, VS is known, so now we already have V3. So as soon as V3 is known, you know, I can plug it in. Remember V3, um, let's see, what did I do here? So this is not right. No, this is VS. So V3 was here. So now I can solve for I2. So I can plug in this value of V3 that I, and I put it up here and then solve for I2 and I can put an I2 over here and then solve for I3. So now that once I have V3 from the mesh, so what I do is I do, that. so this is loop equations are underlined and then the mesh equations are not. So what I do is I do mesh and loop and then I just substitute the values that I find in the mesh method into the loop method. Now what's, what's really important with a mesh method for parallel resistors is you need to know that the delta V is equal. So the delta V here is V1, the delta here is V2, the delta V here is V3 plus Vs. So this value, so I'm gonna put a star next to all the values that are equal. So all these are equal. So what I can do is I can factor this out and then all of these R's are known and then the only unknown left is V3, which is what I did. So V3 plus Vs, sorry, this should have parentheses. 
right? So that I so I can what I can do is I can get the REQ over here, and then I can subtract the VS. Um, and the IS was known. Okay, so the IS is not an unknown. So this is not I3. This is IS. Okay, so this is the loop in the mesh methods. Okay, so with mesh, it's really important. You have to recognize where, where the, the delta V is across the parallels. And you have to recognize that those delta V values are equal. And then what you can do is you can factor out the delta V where the delta V is now your only unknown. And as it turns out, delta V is V3 plus, plus or minus Vs, where Vs is known. So I can now solve for V3. And then I wrote in V3 is I3, R3. So I put V3 here. The only unknown left here is Vs is known. So it's just I2. So I solve for I2, plug in I2 over here, and then I get I3, right? And then if I need to know, if the answer question was, what is V3? Well, we know that V3 is, is I3, R3. Okay, so you so you usually you have to do both the mesh and the loop, and then you can um, solve and get the correct answer.